What we're going to do is we're going to do a lab, and the lab looks like this. And the, 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 the nice thing about this lab is that it, it combines two elements that everybody is really eager to combine. Okay? It combines water with wires and electricity. Right? You know? It's like my, my parents would always, would always, you know, and I was, they'd just say, go outside and play with the water and the wires and the electricity. Right? You know? My parents were very advanced. They wouldn't just say they wouldn't just say go play in the traffic, right? Um, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a tray. In the tray, we're going to put a sheet of paper. I've got this very thick paper that, for some reason, we had reams of this stuff. Okay, and so. Uh, We'll put this very thick, I think it's called vellum, right? We'll put the thick paper in there. Then we're going to put, I had some zinc flashing left over from a roofing project. So we've got that and we're going to do like, um, we'll do different shapes. So this might be a circular shape. That guy might be a flat thing like this, right? Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll attach this guy to maybe positive five volts. Is that what it says in there? I think it says five volts in it. Oh, it says six volts. Okay, well, I lied to you. I'm so sorry. Okay, positive six volts. Yeah, is that what it says? I always want to. Yeah, there we go. All right, this is good, right? And then we're going to attach this guy to zero volts. Okay, that guy's going to be zero volts. This guy's going to be six volts. Now, the water in Portland is darn near distilled water. Okay, so it's it's actually a very good resistor. So what it's going to do is it's going to be like that sheet of rubber. Basically, this part is going to be pushed up, and that part's going to be pushed down. Yeah? Are you picturing this? We can picture this, right? We've got the ability to visualize this. We can visualize this. I actually need a sheet of rubber, but we don't have a sheet of rubber. But we do have plastic. We do have Nathan up here. Here, stand up. And we do have Kevin. He's just about to fall asleep. Come here. Come here. There you go. You guys want to stretch that tightly between you. All right. And we have a round object. And this is not rubber. This is not rubber. It is not. And so this guy is pushing up. And this guy is pushing down. Are you picturing that? Yeah, that's kind of crazy, right? So this guy's actually got a circular depression here. Tip it toward, toward them so they can sort of see it. Like, there you go. Lower the class side hand. There you go. Right? This has got sort of a roundish depression around it. This guy's got a, an area where we expect the field to be quite uniform close to this. The farther we get away, we expect the uniformity to sort of warp. Yeah? Okay? Yeah? Okay, so pushing down, pushing up. Let's give these guys some applause. Okay, stay, 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 stay. Okay, now... If we have two parallel plates, if we have two parallel plates, one positive, one negative, okay, we would expect, well, you see that it's uniform fairly much between them. It's pretty flat and evenly sloped, right? If we get it closer together, though, between them gets even better, doesn't it? Yeah, it's even better. What if I make them small and far apart? Yeah, then it's actually kind of pretty curvy, isn't it? Maybe in between them it's going to be fairly flat, right? And then, of course, the other possibility is that I have two points like this, right? And this is really, this is where we really need the sheet of rubber. This should be like a nice circular thing around this, another circular thing, like two mountains, one mountain, one small valley, a crater. I actually have one of these, like near South Sister, there's this crater. Should I be nervous about that? I don't know. Okay, let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> All right. Okay, now, what we can do, and what we're going to do, okay, is um, I've taken pencils and I've taken a knife to them and I've exposed the graphite, which is a good conductor, much better than the water. And we've got a lead on there. And we can attach that to a voltmeter. Right, so the voltmeter will be off here to the side. And we're going to set the voltmeter to 200 volts. Don't be alarmed. Okay, the voltmeter, setting it to 200 volts gives us one decimal place. If you have two decimal places, you'll go nuts on this lab, but one decimal place is nice because you can get it to read you know, 0.8 and 0.6 and stuff like that. Otherwise, you'll go crazy. So we're setting it to 200 just so we have only one decimal point, right? And what we do 
is we tell the voltmeter, voltmeters always have to compare. All they can do is compare one voltage to another. So we have to tell the, volt, the voltmeter, please compare any voltage you get on your voltage lead to zero volts. So you have this side is connected to the zero volt side. And then this side, the one that's labeled V like that, is connected to a pencil. A very large pencil, apparently. Okay, It's like clipped onto the pencil like this, right? It's actually electrically connected to that. And then you can take that pencil tip and put it in the water, and it will tell you the voltage. And so if I put it halfway between 0 and 6, it's going to read 3. Yeah, there we go, right? And so I can find all the places that are 3 volts. Yeah, so I can just kind of come in here and go, uh, and 3 volts will be, you know, maybe straight across, as I imagine, right? Okay, and then if we go up to, if we get close to zero volts, they're going to kind of do this. I think. I don't know. They might curve around like this or something like that. You're going to get all those things. Those are lines of equal potential. Now, have you ever read a topographic map? Yeah, that's what those are, gravitational lines of equal potential. They are gravitational lines of equal height, right? And with our gravity field, that corresponds to equal potential, yes? Okay, so if you follow a topographical line, okay, if you follow a topographical line, you're actually walking, you're traversing a slope, correct? Okay, so if I'm walking along a topo line, right, if there's a, if there's a, a, a creek that cuts into the hill, I'll have to kind of go this way, and trails often follow topographical lines, right? Yeah, to keep the trail level, you have to cut into valleys and then come out of them, yes? Okay, now... If I'm walking along a topographical line, where's downhill? It's to your right or left, exactly to your right or left. Skiers talk about this, right? That is called the fall line. Okay? That is actually the line of the gravitational gradient. Okay? In this case, perpendicular to these lines, perpendicular to these lines is actually the electric field, right? So then that that becomes, you know, that's that's difficult, right? Let's suppose we've got a set of lines like this, okay, and we got this guy, and our lines go like that, and whoops, maybe like this, maybe this guy goes straight across, and this guy goes, and this guy goes like that. What we want to do is, you'll make these dots, you'll just find where they are, go all the way across the paper, find them, go all the way across the paper, as many as you need. If, it, if it's not changing, you can space them fairly far apart. If it changes rapidly, put them closer together, right? And it'll go pretty quick. So then you, tr you fill these in like this. And you might want to do this, connect those with like pen or do them in dark pencil or something like that. I don't know. Right? Now you have to draw, and this takes some doing, you have to draw the electric field. Now, what I suggest you do is just start at these lines doesn't it have to come off this line perpendicular? So electric field is perpendicular to is perpendicular to equipotential. These are the lines of equipotential. Equipotential means same voltage, doesn't it, in this case? Yeah? So I want it, what you want to do is come off of this guy and just kind of curve it. So when you get to the next one, you hit that one perpendicular, yeah? When you get to the next one, you've got to hit that one. And I, I find it helps to just kind of do this sort of a thing, you know, just kind of a... And try to make them smooth, okay? It's going to cross that guy, and then it's going to curve like this. Cross that guy perpendicular. And it's like, what does it do here? I don't know. That's a tough call, right? Okay. What I don't want to see, I don't want to see this. Is that loving? That's a spider web. No spider webs. Okay, that's not correct. It cannot be perpendicular to these guys, right? Yeah, these lines have to curve in between, right? So that line, properly done, right, is it comes off here perpendicular. And in the middle it curves, so it sort of helps to kind of outline what you think it's going to do, right? Notice that I'm, I'm hitting all these guys at right angles like that. You don't need to label them all as right angles, right? And it might help you to just kind of do a dotted line like that. There's a, an art to it. The ones in the middle are easy, right? It's just like, well, I don't know. Of course, I drew that one all curved like this, right? Yeah, it should be straight across, but who knows, right? 
Okay. Now, 